Hi there, here's my solution to question 4.17. We are supposed to build an appropriate model for predicting abundance from body mass for carnivores. So the explanatory variable is body mass in kilograms, and abundance is supposed to measure about how many carnivores there are in a particular area. And the way that's done is by calculating something called the abundance or the count of carnivores per 10,000 kilograms of their prey in a particular area. So the data need to be entered at, into the calculator. I've entered body mass into list one and abundance into list two. And then we simply have to start analyzing that data to decide what type of a model is appropriate. After we've done that analysis, we'll build the model and be done. So first of all, let's go to the calculator. Let's do a quick scatter plot then. The data are already in list one and in list two. So plot one is set to list one and list two. So I'm gonna check my Y equals menu just to make sure there's nothing in there. There's something in there, I'll clear it out. So I'm gonna zoom nine it. So notice this does not look like a particularly useful graph and I would agree to some extent, but this zoom nine scatter plot does tell me one important idea. So if I look over here at the bigger image, notice there's observations here and here and here, and it looks like most of the observations are really, really close to the axes. So what's most important here is to notice that there is not a linear pattern being demonstrated. So that means it is time to consider either an exponential model or a power model. So let's go back next and make sure we remember how those models are situated or formatted, how we can, if you will, test for them. So an exponential model, if I start with y equals a times b to the power x, if I log both sides, so I have the natural log of my response variable, and the right side, if I split this up and organize it, I have a constant plus x, which is my explanatory variable, and it's multiplied to the natural log of b. So this is a linear model, but it is linear using an input of plain x and an output of natural log of y. The slope is multiplied to x, that's the natural log of b, and the constant is the natural log of a. So if I graph x against plain, rather, if I graph my input, my explanatory variable of x against the natural log of y as the response variable, if that demonstrates a linear pattern, that suggests that an exponential model is appropriate. The power model. So notice the roles of x and b are reversed, so I still have my constant of a but now it's x to the power b, and if I reorganize this by taking the logarithms of both sides, on the left side I have my output, which is again the natural log of the response variable. The right side can be split into a constant, the natural log of a, plus this time the b can be put in front of the natural log of x, so my slope is b, my input is the natural log of x. This is indeed a linear model, so the natural log of x is the input, times the slope plus the constant equals my output. So this suggests that if the natural log of x compared to the natural log of y, if that follows a linear pattern, then a power model is appropriate. So the first thing we're gonna do in the calculator, I'm gonna go back to the home screen and I'm gonna take the natural log of the explanatory variable, that's in list one, and I'm gonna store that into list three Then I'm going to take the natural log of the response variable. The response variable is in list two. I'm going to store this into list four. So now I have all of the data that I need in order to do this analysis. So let's test for the exponential model first. So if I go to my plot, what I want to look at is plain x, which that is in list one, and I want to compare that to, I want to plot that against the natural log of my response variable. That would be in list four. So as we just saw a moment ago, if this gives me a linear pattern, then it suggests that an exponential model is appropriate. Well, I can at least see the data a little bit better. That's because I'm looking at logarithms. So, but in fact, that still does not demonstrate a linear pattern. So an exponential model doesn't look appropriate. Next, we should test for the power model. 
So in the plot, instead of looking at list one and list four, I'm gonna go into my first plot and I wanna compare list three and list four. List three is the natural log of x, list four is the natural log of y. If this plot is linear, then a power model will be a good plan. So we'll zoom nine that. And this plot does actually look like a linear model. This looks like we have found then that a power model is appropriate here. So again, understand what we're looking at. This is a plot of the natural log of X compared to the natural log of Y. Because that suggests a linear form, that suggests that a power model is appropriate. And now it's time to calculate that power model. What I would do is run a linear regression then on lists three and list four. That's the natural log of X and the natural log of Y. So there we go, list three, natural log of X, list four, natural log of Y. We can calculate our regression. Very good, so I can see the intercept here is 4.49 and I can see the slope is negative 1.05. So let me write those down here. We'll write this as a linear model. Again, the intercept was 4.49. The slope was negative 1.05. But as you'll see, I'm writing this pretty carefully because if I go back to the, the paper that I'm writing on as I was copying it down from the calculator, take a look. So the idea is this is a linear model, but I didn't write my linear model using plain X and plain Y. Understand that the X values are really the natural log of X. The Y values are really the natural log of Y, and this is a prediction, so I even put the hat over my natural log of Y. So now it's time to create my power model. What's really convenient though about a power model is, this is ultimately what I wanna build. I wanna build a model that looks like this. I need to find my constant A, and then I need to find my power B, but the slope right here is B. I don't have to do anything in order to calculate that slope. I've automatically got that. That's awfully convenient. So all I have to do is find A. So if we go back again to where I transformed the power model into the linear model, take a look. Here is the power model, and if I rearrange it you look uh, using logarithms, there's the natural log of X. So B really is the slope, the negative 1.05 that we found. The constant then in our linear model is the natural log of A. I want to find that A in order to build my power model. So all that's left to do then is to take the natural log of A, here we go, and set that equal to the constant in my linear model, that's the 4.49. So recall that natural log is just a log base E of A, that's 4.49. So I can reorganize that in exponential form, the base is E, the exponent is 4.49, and that should equal A. So I can approximate that e to the power 4.49. I can do that on my calculator. We'll go to the home screen. So second natural log button, there's e to the power. I can type in my 4.49, and that will give me the constant that I'm looking for. We'll call it 89.12. And we're essentially done here. So my model, y hat is equal to the 89.12 times x, my explanatory variable to the power negative 1.05. There is my power model. So some things to consider then if I want to analyze how appropriate this model is, it might be worth going back to the calculator. So let me call up again that linear regression command. So the reason I want to run the command again, I didn't look at my value of r squared. Fair enough. So the value of r squared is 0.83. So this is suggesting that 83% of the variation 
in the natural log of abundance is being explained by this linear regression on the natural log of uh, weight. So weight in kilograms for these particular carnivores. So that suggests I'm explaining quite a bit of the variability in my response variable. Another way to evaluate whether or not a model is a good fit is to go take a look at the residual plot. So I will set up that residual plot. I'll go into plot number one. List three is a perfectly fine X list to use. Those are the values of the explanatory variable, the natural log of X. So into the Y list, I'm going to put my residual list. So I'll hit second stat and call up my residual list and press enter. Very good. I'll zoom nine this. So there's a nice scattered residual plot. I certainly don't see any pattern in there whatsoever regarding the errors that this model is making. So that nice scattered residual plot is also suggesting that this power model that we built is an appropriate model for predicting abundance from body mass. Hope this has been helpful.